Today we are going to be talking about mathematical induction. By the end of this video, you should be able to use mathematical induction to prove various formulas. So, before we start talking about mathematical induction, let's take a look at what happens when you add up the odd numbers. So we are going to take a look at what is called partial sums. We have already discussed in the past how you can add up a certain number of terms of a sequence. We are just going to add up some of the terms in a sequence. That's all a partial sum is. So the first partial sum for the odd numbers is just 1. Well, 1 plus nothing is 1. The second partial sum, when you are adding the first two terms, you have 1 plus 3, which gives us 4. If you add up the first three odd numbers, that adds up to 9. If you add up the first four odd numbers, you get 16. You add up the first five odd numbers, you get 25. So let's look at this pattern of numbers. We have 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Those are all of the perfect squares. This is 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. So if we continued this pattern and we add up a whole bunch of odd numbers, we could hypothesize that the sum of the first n odd numbers is just n squared. So here's how we can write this out. We already have our partial sequence here. The way that we generally write odd numbers as a formula is 2n minus 1. And you can check that if you plug in 1, you get 1. If you plug in 2, you get 3. You plug in 3, you get 5 etc. So we can hypothesize that this sum of n odd numbers is going to be n squared. Mathematical induction is a tool that we can use to prove this. So mathematical induction involves two steps to prove various formulas involving natural numbers. Frequently has to do with sequences. So the basic idea behind mathematical induction is that for any statement p of n for positive integers n, you have two steps. In the base step, you show that p sub 1 is true. So show that your statement is true for the smallest case, in our case when n is 1. Then you do the inductive step, where you show that if p sub k is true, then p sub k plus 1 is also true. This means that you are saying, if this statement is true for the first k terms, then it must be true for the k plus 1 term. Mathematical induction is a proof technique that is used a lot in higher level math. So it's important to get an understanding of it now. Let's look at our example involving adding the odd numbers. Sum of the first n odd numbers is equal to n squared. We need to start by looking at our base step. We need to at least establish that this is true for our first odd number. As we said earlier, the sum of the first odd number is just 1. Then we need to test out the formulas that we have hypothesized here. So is that equal to 2 times 1 minus 1? And is that equal to 1 squared? Well, yes, these all equal 1. So our base step checks out. The inductive step 
is a lot more involved. We are going to assume that the sum of the first k odd numbers is equal to k squared. So we are assuming that our hypothesis is true for the first k terms. Our goal is to prove that the sum of the first k plus 1 odd terms is equal to k plus 1 squared. So we are going to start with the fact that we know the sum of the first k plus 1 terms is equal to the sum of the first k terms plus the k plus 1 term. All this is saying is if you know the sum of the first k terms and you add the next term, then that gives you the sum of the k first k plus 1 terms. So now, we are assuming that the sum of the first k terms is k squared. And by using our formula up here, 2n minus 1, the k plus 1th odd number would be 2 times k plus 1 minus 1. Now all we have to do is a little bit of algebra. I'm going to distribute and combine like terms. My ultimate goal is to end up with k plus 1 squared. Well, I can factor this quadratic, which happens to be k plus 1 squared. So, by assuming that the sum of the first k terms is k squared, by adding the next term to my partial sum, I have shown that the sum of the first k plus 1 odd numbers is going to be k plus 1 squared. So this shows that if you know the sum of the first few odd numbers and you add the next odd number, it is still going to follow the same pattern. So we have verified that the sum of the first n odd numbers is equal to n squared. Let's look at another example. Here, we want to show that the sum of this sequence, 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12, so the sum of all of the multiples of 3 is equal to 3 halves n times n plus 1. So let's start with our base step. We know that the sum of the first term is just 3. If we check our formula, our formula for the nth term is 3 times n. So we need to double check that we have the same thing when we plug in 1 there. And then if we plug in 1 for our summation formula, 3 halves times n times n plus 1, we need to make sure that these are all equal. So clearly, 3 is equal to 3 times 1. Here we have 3 halves times 1, which is 3 halves, times 2, which is 3. So our base case holds. Now moving on to the inductive step. We are going to assume that the sum of the first k terms is equal to 3 halves k times k plus 1. We want to prove that the sum of the first k plus 1 terms is equal to 3 halves k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. 
all I'm doing is plugging in k plus 1 for n in my formula up here. So just like last time, we know that the sum of the first k plus 1 multiples of 3 is going to be the sum of the first k multiples of 3 plus the k plus 1 term. We are assuming that the sum of the first k multiples of 3 is 3 halves times k times k plus 1. And if we use our formula here, 3n, the k plus 1th term is 3 times k plus 1. So, now we just do our algebra. There are several ways you could do this. I am going to factor out a k plus 1. So both this blue term and the green term have a k plus 1 in them. So I'm going to factor that out. Then I have 3 halves k plus 3 left. If I look at 3 halves k plus 3, and I factor out 3 halves, because I know I want to have 3 halves as my coefficient. If I factor that out, I end up with k plus 2. And k plus 2 is k plus 1 plus 1. So now I have exactly what I wrote in purple earlier. So I have shown that, in fact, the sum of the first n multiples of 3 is 3 halves n times n plus 1. Let's look at one final example. We want to prove that the sum of the first n perfect squares is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. So let's start with our base step. So the sum of the first perfect square, the first perfect square is 1, so that's 1. We need to double check that that is the same as if we use our formula for the nth term which is n squared, and if we use our formula for the summation. So we know that 1 squared is 1. If we look at this fraction, we have 1 times 2 times 3. 1 times 2 times 3 is 6, divided by 6 is 1. So our base case holds. If we look at our inductive step, if we assume that the sum of the first k perfect squares is k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 over 6, we want to prove that the sum of the first k plus 1 perfect squares is k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 times 2 k plus 1 plus 1 over 6. So I am warning you. The algebra in this problem is going to be a tiny bit more involved than the previous problems. Just like the last two, we know that the sum of the first k plus 1 perfect squares is going to be the sum of the first k perfect squares plus the k plus 1th perfect square. We are assuming that the sum of the first k perfect squares is k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 over 6, and the k plus 1 perfect square 
is just k plus 1 squared. So I am going to start by getting a common denominator. Now, I could multiply everything together and combine like terms, but then I would have a cubic that I would have to factor. So I'm going to do this more efficiently. Both numerators have a k plus 1, so I'm going to factor that out. And what I have left in the first numerator is k times 2k plus 1. And in the second numerator, I have 6 times k plus 1. This is all over 6. Now I can just combine like terms inside the brackets. And I have less to simplify. So I have k plus 1 times 2k squared plus k plus 6k plus 6. And if I combine like terms, I have 2k squared plus 7k plus 6. Now, I just need to factor this quadratic. So, lastly... I have k plus 1. k plus 2 is just k plus 1 plus 1. 2k plus 3 is actually the same as 2 times k plus 1 plus 1. And if you don't believe me, you can distribute that and combine like terms and double check. Now, this should be what we were trying to prove in purple above. So we have in fact shown that the sum of the first n perfect squares is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6.